So when I was 16 years old, I was given this task to do by my dad. We were always fixing up this old house in Mill Valley and there was always just junk around. And he had loaded the station wagon up uh, with a bunch of boxes and bottles and junk and stuff from the, the old garage. And, and it was my job. Uh, he gave me some money to, to drive the station wagon to the dump. And uh, I had just gotten my license. So this was kind of a big deal. And my friend was over. So he gave me a couple of dollars. Back then it was really cheap, but that was a lot of money to us. And we, um, we set off for the dump. And we got about halfway there and we decided that we would, instead of taking the stuff to the dump and paying for it, if we just dumped it someplace, then we could keep the money. And so we had seen a fast food restaurant and, and that caught our eye. So we, we went to this parking lot in this fast food restaurant and uh, we opened the back of the station wagon in the corner of this parking lot. Uh, we just... I mean, remember this, we got in the back of the, the station wagon with our feet and we just pushed all this stuff onto the parking lot. And it was kind of this big parking lot. It was in this kind of corner so nobody could see it. You know, it's almost embarrassing. It is embarrassing to tell you that I was that kind of a kid that would do that and just put a big, huge pile of garbage there. But anyway, we took, we, you know, we moved our car and we thought we were so clever and we got away with it. And we, we went into the restaurant and we, you know, we got tacos or whatever and spent the money. And uh, later I went home and, and uh, my dad asked me if uh, he goes, yeah, how to go to take the stuff to dump. And I was, oh, yes, sir. You know, and um, and so that story is, uh, you know, is is actually not the ending. The ending of that's not th the true ending. Like, that's a pretty interesting story. But what makes it really cool is actually <laughs> uh, the restaurant, the, the fast food place came out later and they went through this pile of garbage and they found magazines and it had my dad's name, the, the, like the address they used to like print on the magazines, that print thing that had Wilton and it had the address of our house. So this guy did his homework and he called my dad and he said, there's all this garbage here. So when I went home and I told my dad that I had, you know, he asked me, did you take this stuff to the dump? And I said, oh yes, sir. Um, well. It, it, it was really intense and I got in a big whopping amount of trouble. But that's that story and that ending is so much better. And so I love this quote by John le Carre. He, he says, the dog, the dog, the cat sat on the mat. And that's not really a story. But the cat sat on the dog's mat is a story. Today I'm talking about tension, and this is Nicholas Wilton and Art to Life, and I love this idea because this is something that I really struggle with in my art making when my work's not really going well, and it has to do with tension, with the with with the lack of tension that it's just kind of okay. So I like to think of tension as as juxtapositions of big things something noticeable, something. Uh, now, this, this can be scale. This can be, um, sometimes I'm, I'm working on a painting of stairs right now and everything was kind of similar in size. Everything was kind of the same amount of energy to each part of the painting, right? Like it, it makes it, um, uh, just your energy input being the same everywhere doesn't create tension. What creates tension is having an area that you, you put a lot of energy into and then one that maybe you don't work on at all. Sometimes in order to inject tension, I have to wreck it a little. I have to push it further to create that tension in myself because now, now I've got a problem and I've kind of wrecked it and I have to fix it. And it's that back and forth that somehow makes it stronger, that somehow, um, gives it, rises it above just sort of normal, everyday kind of artwork. Um, color can be the same deal. Like if you can push it with color, if you can take color that you're not used to using even and use it in a way, like sometimes color, if it's ugly color, sometimes color can be so off-putting that, that it gets good. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so having these combinations, having this idea that um, 
when we look at our work, sometimes we do everything the same. Sometimes everything's working out, everything, this is, we've done this before, and this is our palette, and this is kind of the scale of things. This is, it looks like my work, but something's missing. And that is sometimes really, really hard to tell what that is. But often it's this tension, it's this juxtaposition of some edge, something to push against, where things meet um, that are different, there's interest. I love to think about this like um, where, where a river meets the bank, right? Like where that water is going by, right there where that tension is. That's where interesting things happen. That's where change happens, where the ocean hits the beach on that edge. The, the ocean doesn't, you know, it's really calm out there and it's kind of moving, but when it comes in and it hits the shore, there's friction and there's, there's erosion and waves and edge. And, and then you go inland and it's quiet and nothing much is changing, but right where those two things meet. So that's a place to really look in your work where things meet, where things touch, where transitions happen. These are opportunities for tension, to, to be able to create tension. Anyway, uh, this can be a really great tool. This can be something to just kind of write down in your notebook, something to evaluate your work. And if you look at your work, your old work, and, and the things that you've really liked in the past, often there's some tension there. I noticed that the work that I've made that doesn't really have so much of that, it's really beautiful maybe, or people like it or whatever, and I kind of liked it at the time, but it doesn't have any longevity. It's the things that have an edge to it, the things where you felt some tension when you were making it, and it's the things when people look at it and they feel tension that they remember it and they're, they, they're drawn to it because it's got juice, it's got energy. Anyway, um, let me know what you think about this idea. Let me know in the comments um, how you create this in your work or is it something you even think about? Because I think it's something we don't talk about. You know, we talk about color, we talk about design, we talk about value, we talk about you know, what inspires us. But this sort of under the surface thing of tension is, is really an important piece of making our work more and more like ourselves. Thanks for being here. For those of you who are new here, uh, we have an amazing uh, free artist Facebook group. Um, you can click on the link below and um, join us. Everyone's included, everyone's welcome. And there's some extraordinary work being done in there. So thanks for being here, appreciate it. Okay. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please, Join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.